So we need to get a program, okay. which uh, is a free program uh, from the intranet. And you, all you need to do is search L3DT. All right, L3DT. And, what it, and I don't know a massive amount this, about this program. I just saw a video that teaches you how to make terrains uh, with height maps from this. This can do way more than just make height maps. That's just like one of the low level things it can I think you can generate weather patterns or something. I don't know. It's crazy what this program can do. But what wow. we're interested in is the fact that it can generate land mass and uh, make it quite realistic. And you can sort of choose what kind of uh, uh, climate that uh, is it's going to base it on. So you could choose tropical and it'll be sort of more flat land. Or you could choose temperate and it might be quite mountainy. Or you could choose desert and it's very flat. Oh, okay. But, um, you can also tell it where you would want the sea level to be. So it will generate above sea water differently than it would be underwater. Oh, it actually cool. has data that tells it what the world is kind of like, sort of in respect to its uh, geology, if that's the right term. Uh, right, so uh, if you click downloads, we'll just download the standard edition. Oh, you have, uh, yeah, standard edition. Okay. And um, I think Pro is just, we don't need that. <laughs> So yeah, download there. Okay, it's, it's so uh, it's downloaded. So go ahead and install it. I'm gonna say no on the walkthrough guide. No, yeah, don't worry about that. I'm your. You're, I was gonna say you <laughs> are my walkthrough guide. Okay. That'll tell you about all the functions, and we only need sort of the basics. It's, okay. Well, the basics of what I know anyway. So we just want what's good for Beam and G. Absolutely. So if we click a new uh, file there at the top, yeah, new okay. project. And we want to choose, I think it's designable map recommended. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe it's that. Okay. Right, so the width and height. Uh, <laughs> these values are the same as they are when you create a blank terrain, as we explained in previous episode. Mm -hmm. They go up in, in root numbers, I think it's 256, 512, 1024, uh, 20, 48, and 4096. 4096 being the biggest that you can uh, apply into BMNG. Okay. Uh, we, uh, unfortunately, this program, at least in this state, can uh, only go up to 248, 2048, sorry. So um, you can't generate a height map with this to the same size that's capable with BMNG. Oh, sure. So you can do what I did with Vulture Pass, the big open desert with nothing but hills and sand. Um, is is generated at 2048, so it's the biggest that you can make with this program. And what I did is I used Paint.net to stretch it to uh, double the size. Oh, luckily, yeah, okay. You, you, you could do that with figures, luckily, so it does it perfectly for you rather than dragging it like in old Microsoft Paint. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if you stretch it, though, what it's doing is extending the pixels to four times their size. So they're 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 double sorry, double their size. But yeah, essentially that's four times uh, the actual space, because it's one to the left, one below that, one to the right. So basically what you're doing is you're lowering the resolution of the of the height map. Oh, so I gotcha. you, okay. you might I don't know if you've tried Vulture Pass or if anyone listening has, you might notice that it's quite steppy. It goes up in steps. It's quite detailed, but it is all in steps. And I realized afterwards that that's probably the pixels showing up because of where I'd stretched it. So oh, yeah. I was going to I was gonna try and do it again. And if I ever use a different function to stretch it so that it kind of blends it maybe, or just go for it in 248, because it is a gigantic map. It takes ages to get across it. Okay, so, so yeah. you want to ramp this up? Uh, uh, go for... Sod it, go for maximum. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. It won't take too long. If it was that quick for a quarter of that size, one eighth, whatever it is. Anyway, so yeah, next on that. Okay. Is and that... that, yeah. Okay. And then do I need to change so, something here? Put the, put the noise strength back towards the middle. Okay. And the fractal, uh, the noise shape back towards the middle a bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, turn the cliffs and terraces up a little as well. Yeah. All right. And put, er put erosion up one notch. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, try that. All right. At least we get to see it generate. Probably it's quite a funky little uh, visual it gives. Oh, look you can see there. it going over each step and re redoing each different algorithm to make how you've preset each setting. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and you could sort of see it generating as it goes. It gets sort of more and more detailed. And so, definitely takes much longer than the uh, 512, yeah. so. <laughs> and we've added a lot more stuff going on. Ah, true. I think we were just being a bit too easy on it. It just gave us a hill. Yeah, that was useless. There we go. Now we've got That's all kinds better. of stuff. Uh, awesome. I don't. I don't know that it's beam in G worthy, but there's. Oh yeah, stuff. it looks good. It looks, it looks better than some of the maps I've come up with. That's far better. Right. So uh, from here, I yes. just need to go to file and export it. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Export height map. Oh wait, hang on. Uh, export map layer. And then, and then choose the height map. You could say active because that's the one we have selected, but just to be sure that that's okay. the way to make sure it won't. The other one isn't a height map at all. It's like an image. Okay. Uh, so we need to save the file format as a JPEG or PNG, I think, probably be better. Okay. But JPEG, PNG, or uh, what's the other one? Those two at least uh, are BMNG friendly. Yeah, okay. I think it's just those two, actually. You can't use BMP. All right. Um, so file name, just put terrain or floor or something and now i don't know where this is going so i guess i need to oh yeah point that somewhere documents yeah that works for me it does have a resizer in this option here oh, i think i tried that as well and it did the same thing i believe so yeah uh we'll just go with that okay but that was for my experiment anyway this right. is fine so i can just so, hit okay yep Fire. Oh, well, no, that's not what I want. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> I thought I had picked. Funny. It says documents, right? Oh, I yeah. oh, okay, okay. I see, I see. Ah, there we go. All right, now, okay. So make sure to pick the folder, and then so okay. I'm assuming All it right. exported it out. So now let's uh, let's have a look at the design map quickly. The other tab at the top there. Oh, yeah, that's uh, a certain format of map explaining what's there i think there should be some sort of legend for that i don't know but uh if we generate <laughs> sure layers, yeah. <laughs> i'm not that kind of legend <laughs> let me Sorry. see if there's a legend i was just going to see if there's something under it's, view um, i don't i, don't I know. think this is almost not i don't, don't want to say machine code but something like computer code of some form but if we generated the extra layers we'd be able to see more detailed uh like images of it Sure. Obviously, we don't need that. So, right, let's close this program because we are now done with it. Okay. I don't need to save these changes, do I? No, no. Okay. So, yeah, BeamNG Drive Documents folder. We need to find your level. Um, because you put quite a lot of stuff into that, I don't want to suggest that you delete the terrain and okay. start again because we can just back it up and put it back afterwards. So. So, I'm going into my levels. Yeah, go into levels and open your. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we need to get the floor terrain folder. The little white one there. This one here. Yep, and back that up. Put that somewhere you aren't going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I'm not sure that even exists. I, you I know what? I'm, it. Just, I'm gonna throw well, it. I don't my, actually. Here. I'll throw it on my desktop. Uh, so right, if you grab the uh, height map that you made and you need to plonk it in this folder. Okay. So if I go out See, you knew. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we do terrain. I called it terrain one. Yeah, that's the There one. it is, there it is. Okay, I got it. All right, and we're gonna copy that into our beam NG level folder with our name on it. And I'm gonna paste it in there. It's okay. just black and white. So if, if well, you've seen it already, actually, just just open it up actually because it looks sure. a bit different now. It's not in L three D T. So yeah, there you are. Oh yeah, okay. Look, looks like someone spilt white paint on a black piece of paper or something. Yes, yes, it does. Or watercolored. So yeah, that's oh, that looks really good actually. Um, 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, um, I, had, I had literally let's... nothing to do with it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> let's, let's get it in there. Let's let's have a look. So, right, okay. so now we can start the game, load the level. What a mess. <laughs> yes, what a mess. So, what's happened here? We've deleted the terrain folder, the right, file. Right. So, the game has no recollection of the terrain that we made. And the game has also generated one of those small um, grid map kind of terrains yes. as we explained yes. in the first episode it just does that okay. um the reason all the ground model uh the ground cover and everything's still there is because it's still in its saved position sure from last time okay uh, so uh, all we need to do is delete everything again like we did for grid map so if you go uh, pause and then into the editor all right I, I, I don't really even need to explain this so much do i because <laughs> it's this that's okay. That's okay. It, it, it always helps can, to go back in. All right. So I'm in the object editor, and then at this point, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go no, back yeah, to the object. Absolutely. And, and then here, I'm going to delete all of these, right? Except the player, because uh, that's including like, floor. Oh, including floor. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to delete all of that. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. And then uh, just the, check those two. Uh, the level objects folder, so okay. it's in there. Yeah, have... just sky. Excellent. Okay, so now we can import the height map. The okay. grand finale. Or not finale, but the, the moment of truth. That's the one. Uh, so, yeah, if we click file. Okay. And import terrain height map. There it is right there. Okay. The magic button. The magic button. All right. So if we call it floor, because the previous terrain was called floor, and then that uh, the mission... The mission group file that we had to edit before is still floor, so it will recognize it. So that's okay. good. Um, now, if we click browse and go to the level folder. Top one. I'm sorry. Oh, you've, you've put a shortcut there for it. Remember, David in art just down there below two? No, I did. Oh, that, it added that, I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I suggested that in a video oh, oh, previously <laughs> for a shortcut. Then, yeah. Yes, yes, I did. I added that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at this, at this point, we uh, have um, a few parameters we can adjust. Okay. Uh, there's the meters per pixel, which is, uh, this is a very cheap way to extend the size. So at the moment, the pixels are um, pretty much the uh, not the best quality you can have them, but each pixel of the mesh that makes up the terrain is one meter away okay. uh, from each other. So when you morph stuff, it does look pretty smooth. Okay. You can re you can reduce that to 0 0.5 or something, and it will look really smooth. Okay. Um, I don't recommend going below one unless you really want it to look gorgeous. Okay. The, 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 what it does is it will multiply the size as well. So if we, you put 0 0.5 now, it would half the size of the terrain when you imported it. And it oh, would just okay. make it super high resolution. Oh, okay. Um, or you could go up, like, which map? Uh, South Park, I believe, is at four meters per pixel. <laughs> so it's huge. But uh, when you start putting hills in, they look really polygonated and not so cool. So that's why oh, it's yeah. not. I haven't done a lot of work on it because, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of ways to make it more interesting. <laughs> it's still, it's meant to just be a driving map, just long straights and both curves and hills. I will get back on to it at some point. I've lost my uh, my withdrawal symptoms from making roads, roads upon roads and roads oh, and roads. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Anyway, so we need to also decide the height, the range of height between zero point black and point white on the height map. So okay. this this can make a vast difference. For instance, with South Park, it it, it makes like. It pays to go and research with Google Maps, like put yourself down on the road and look at a hill where you're roughly are on your height map and see just how high it is in perspective to say hills to behind you and to the left and whatnot, just to kind of get a gauge. It does take a bit of trial and error, but you can always just delete and re-import, delete re and re-import. Um, so I would say a good go-to for this probably be for 300 to 400. Okay. I'll split. I don't want it to be too extreme. I'll split the difference and say 350. That sounds great. Okay. Uh, we can also add in uh, the textures here, but 
if you click edit, oh sorry, click the little plus. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, no, okay, click cancel on that. Yeah, you can always just use auto paint to texture the whole thing. It'll still take just as long. Okay. Um, also, there you have flip y axes, which is basically negative the height map. So whatever's black is white, whatever's white is black. So instead of hills where there's dips, there's dips where yeah, there's Yeah, then you hills. have valleys. Okay, that's cool. All right. Yeah. So if, it's, if you're not quite happy with it, you can always just try it the other way, and it might be amazing. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Driving cool. on the underside of the world. <laughs> yes. All right. So, yeah, I think we're ready to import. Okay. Uh, I wonder how long it'll take. Boom. That, it takes that long. Oh, my. Yeah, not long at all. Look at there. So this that is our... I'm going to zoom funky. out. There we go. And so now we see my new world... With all of its funky heightness. Holy cow, that's freaking huge. Yeah, that's a big space. I think this would be four four miles across, I think. Wow. Yeah, because when I doubled this, it was eight miles. I used the, um, the, my, the odometer to measure it. That's huge. Not, okay. not, I, I measured it on the flat. I just generated a blank terrain at the size I was going to import my height map at and i just measured it driving straight across so i knew how big i was making it that way i knew how big to make my terrain capture of colorado to be to make it scale if you know what i mean oh yeah 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 so i knew i knew to get eight kilometers sorry not miles eight kilometers wow those wow. features are great there's some nice dips and everything and sea level looks quite predictable just to the left of you there i think that's sea level we'll see where that ridge dips down that might be oh no yeah, actually like... thinking about it when we were in l3dt the contour lines that were blue were the ones that were meant to be sea level that's something i forgot to mention so when you do oh. use it when you've finished making your height map before you export it from l3dt you'll notice some of the contours are colored there's a green red yes, and a green, blue yeah, one yeah i noticed that the blue one is the uh, sea level where it, it has generated the map to have its sea level. So take note of that so you can roughly gauge where to look for. I mean, if you go to the outside of the map, you should be able to notice it if you are going that far with this map. Sure. Okay. But, um, obviously, you can still morph and change and <clears throat> edit this to your heart's content. But now you've got a basis of complete exploration to go on top of sort of thing oh that is so cool wow so you can you could just have this as all dirt and sand and mud and just say hey go nuts basically what i did with vulture pass it wasn't all sand some of it's rocky dirt but it was it textured with the okay. auto paint so nice. it could have the flat bits of sand and the sidey bits as rocky dirt very cool okay so what should we do with our map at this point now, now that so, we now that we have terrain, we need to make it pretty, right? <laughs> at this point, really, everything that you could do to it, we've sort of covered the basics of previously. So, I mean, you could auto paint it, and then you could start putting in trees and put your ground cover in, and then start putting some roads in, and then start flattening the land so that the roads are smooth.